<laughs> okay. Oh, and I forgot. Hello. We're back. All right. <laughs> we are back. So we are going to talk about probably the most exciting topic <laughs> there is. God. Drill bits. Oh, yeah. How could I possibly talk for days on end about a drill bit? There is so much to know about this stupid drill bit. <laughs> the, the wonderful drill bit. What's that? 118. 118? Bangle. Okay. Um, there you one thing you need to know. 118. This end or that end. All right. <laughs> so I'm thinking about making some changes to the whole drill bit project. I kid you not. The most frustrating project that probably you will encounter in the entire time you're here is this project. Uh, the second most is probably welding, if you're not familiar with welding, because it just takes a while to get used to. It takes a lot of practice. This is something where you're going to try and sharpen a drill bit. You either get it or you don't. Um, I'm really thinking about getting rid of this because for some people, you just can't do it. And let's be honest. Shop rates for even general aircraft uh, maintenance run around about hundred dollars an hour. So if you are a mechanic working in my shop and you need to drill a hole and you realize that your quarter inch drill bit is a little bit dull, and I see you over at the grinder for the last hour trying to sharpen it, I'm not going to be happy that you just spent a hundred dollars of potential revenue on a dollar's worth of equipment. So, um, not to mention, there are things called drill doctors now. Mm -hmm. um, it's not yeah, a person, yeah, in a white, yeah, yeah. A person in a white lab coat. They come to you. <laughs> no, it's, just, it's like a it's like a pencil sharpener for a drill bit. You put it in, and you turn it on, and you turn the thing, and come out. Well, that's perfect. Wow, okay, wow. and you really don't need to know much about it. But the FAA is going to ask you questions about drill bits, and there are things that you need to know as a mechanic about drill bits. Just being, if you don't know the first thing about sharpening it. That's going to be okay. But if, if I say, hey, I need you to go drill a hole in this, you need to know how to accurately drill a hole. There's so much work that depends on you drilling a nice, accurate hole. So we're going to talk about that. But in order to talk about a lot of that stuff, you have to talk about the nomenclature and the angles for the drill bits. And there are so many, it's ridiculous. Um, probably the most difficult little piece of equipment there is out there. So again, we're going to talk about all of these uh, angles and the nomenclature and the parts and stuff like that. To compound this problem is that if you take five different books, you will get five different answers for all of this stuff. Um, am I right? right, Ivan? Ivan's like, why does this book call this a heel, but this over here calls this a heel? Why? Okay. So what I've done is I have compiled from various sources um, things that I've taken from the internet. Um, and because now we're on YouTube, uh, we have to give credit where credit's due, is Tooling University, or Tooling U, has been a great source uh, for this one. They do a lot of videos about how to use tools. This happens to be one that uh, they put out for, or somebody did, for free on the internet. Um, and uh, I contacted them, and they gave us some extra demo. So uh, a lot of good information. Uh, so I've compiled it. I put it together. Match the stuff that seems to match the most, and this is what we're going to end up with, and we can all use this as our nomenclature, and when you get out in the field, nobody will know. So you'll say, well, no, this, is, this in fact, is the margins, and the person you're working with, yeah, I don't really care <laughs> what you call that. <clears throat> all right. So with that said, this week we should be covering drills, safety, and safety wire. Next week we're going to cover aircraft hardware. There's a lot to learn there. And then I want to spend the last two weeks strictly on non-destructive testing. I want to spend as much time as possible on especially um, magnetic particle and liquid penetrant inspection so that those who have finished your projects I, and you get enough hours, I can give you a certificate of training that says you have received X number of hours in training. And we'll discuss what to do with that when we get to that point. All right. All right, that's what we're going to talk about. And I think at this point, let me see, I had a handout. And I, I don't think you guys got this handout. Did you? All right, we'll draw this really quick. All right, you can see even here I've made a, I've made a, a correction. I'm like, no, I'm not going to draw about this. We're going to call it something else. So we're going to talk about all these different angles, um, the drill bit, 
Uh, this can be a little difficult to draw for you. I can draw a 3D drill bit, especially with all these little lips and angles. But this is what we're going to talk about. So if you want, you can open up something next to you. This came out of Aircraft Technical Book Company, which means this should have come out of your general. And if you want to look at that at the same time, so do it. All right, so talking about drills. Man, after a month off, I barely remember how to do this. <laughs> you starting to sound like a student, Kevin? I am a student. Drill bits. Well, well, might as well start out with the whole nomenclature of it. What if I came back and actually had really nice handwriting? I would ask you if you had a stroke. <laughs> Alright, we're starting off pretty, pretty nice, sir. <laughs> no, honestly, honestly, people that have a stroke, you know, different languages. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about the body. You got something to blend on. Body. Alright, and when you get to this project, I'm going to bring up this exact drill bit. I'm going to ask you what all these parts are, and you're going to tell me what, what each one of them is, and what they do, and why they're important. So the body is the portion. The portion of the drill extending from the shank to the outer quarters of the cutting lips. So a portion of the drill extending from, from what? Shank. So the shank. The shank. The shank is this end down here. The non-cutting end. And for those of you who don't know, this is the non-cutting end, right? No cutting <laughs> all of that. <laughs> now you laugh. <laughs> 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 From the shank to to what the outer the outer corners of the cutting lips, which is to say. It's pretty much divided into you got the shank, then you got the body. So all this the, the business end is the body, and the other part is the shank. <coughs> and based upon Dennis's theory, I did not have a stroke looking at my ring. <laughs> right, the body will always the shank. You know what you're thinking. Red had a shanker sore. <laughs> Yes, I do know what you're thinking. Can we go home now? No, it's crazy. <laughs> Frequency. Part of the drill by, by which scrolling up by which it is held. <coughs> and and driven. So the part that fits in the drill, motor. There are different types. We're going to cover the different types. This one happens to be a taper shank as it gets narrower. This one. Kevin. Uh, what chapter did you say of the drill? I didn't. You didn't say what chapter? I didn't say. Page 11. But it is 11. It's 11 14. Held and driven. I scratched out the hand. Ah. Held and driven. And let's see, we went from a decent handwriting down to just what the hell is that? That quickly. That's how fast it takes to fall apart. All right, cutting diameter. Okay, so we can look up here. So we have, you can see we have the shank is the part that goes into the drill motor, and then the body is pretty much everything else. And I am going to then talk about what do we say? The cutting diameter. 
cutting damage. There we go, cutting damage. Largest diameter measured across the tip of the lands behind the point. Well, we haven't talked about lands and stuff like that. But the cutting diameter obviously is going to be the fattest part down here at the business end. Although, ironically, you can measure the cutting diameter usually right back here. So if you measure it with the micrometer, it will usually Honestly, measure the same up here. Although, this drawing depicts that that is not the case. So the cutting dammer is the largest measured across the top of the land. So that's between here and over here. It's going to give me the drill diameter. Although this one, they talk about the back taper, which reduces it slightly towards the shank, which means that if you have back taper, the shorter the drill gets, it's all going to be bigger, smaller, say the same that you draw. Bigger, bigger. No, back taper means it gets smaller. So as I start wearing the drill bit out and make this ah. the point right in here, is it going to be the same size or smaller? Okay. Thank you, people. Over there. All right, cutting diameter. Cutting diameter. So that is the diameter over the margins. Diameter over the margin. Or I should say margins <coughs> because there is always two of the drill. Measure that. <laughs> right, so the margins, the margins, and I'll write this down a little bit. Uh, looking at the drill bit, um, as it comes around, this is the um, the land, and then the land actually has just a little bit of a hump to it. And that right there is the margin. And I bet I can find a picture that would do it much more justice. There we go. So right here is the margin, this little thing that sticks out, and down here is the land. But we'll get to that. There we go. Even better one. Margin, plan. We'll come around to that. All right. So we've got cutting diameter, and then we've got the flutes. The flutes play a, play a very important function of the drill bit. And what they will do is they pull the chips that you make, the stuff that cuts, out of the hole. And without them, it would just be a cylinder. And if it was just a cylinder, it wouldn't cut. So by putting the flutes in it, the cutaway, you create the cutting lips. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Wouldn't that be number four for flutes? Yes. Number four. I'm getting there. <laughs> Is that really what you want to concentrate no. on? <laughs> God damn it. People watching that. Hard <laughs> eraser, and it's a hard eraser. It's going on YouTube. Now. Wonderful. There. You even know Roman numerals. Don't give me a bad time. Flutes. They're the helical. Helical or straight. Or straight grooves. Cut or formed in the body of the drill. Cut or formed in the body of the drill. Drill bit. Now, like I said, they provide an important function <coughs> or functions. <coughs> they, one, provide the cutting lips or make the cutting lips because it's been that area has been cut out. So, you can, uh, provide cutting lips. The cutting lip is this little spot right in here where it actually cuts into the metal and cuts. Provides cutting lips. What else did I say? All right. To permit removal of chips. It allows cutting fluid 
to run the opposite way down into the hole that you're drilling, the cutting fluid. Allow cutting fluid to allow cutting fluid to reach the cutting lips. What is cutting fluid? Oh, cutting fluid is a lubricant. It's like an oil, lightweight oil, but it's usually made specifically for, for cutting. And so it lubricates the drill as it goes through and helps cut instead of getting really hot and just burning up. Very similar to the fluid you're going to use when you, or is it the same stuff, when you uh, are cutting threads on your tap and die. Oh, yes, the flute length. Is the maximum is the maximum cutting depth. So in other words, if I have to drill a hole that is this far, I can't do it because once you're drilling into a hole and it gets to here, the chips have nowhere to go. I'm going to tell you a story about the time. <laughs> well, I know there have been times at home where I had to drill some stuff in some wood. I'm like, I can do it. It doesn't work that well, but, you know, if you force it, yeah, it works. <laughs> that was it. Does that count as one or half? No, that's like, like you can't. That was horrible. I'll give you a C. <laughs> All right, what is the land? It's the part of the drill body between the flutes. The part. Um, the drill body. Oops, I roll up in between. And this gives torsional strength. Gives torsional <coughs> to the drill bit. What's torsional? Twist. What's that? Twist. Twist, yeah. Twist, twist, torsional. Uh -huh. So here's the land, and it's going to give strength and rigidity to the drill bit. That's one of the things that gives strength and rigidity. Something else in there too. Let me see. So, according to this, I would be able to answer. Margins, margins, helix angle. <coughs> land, there we go. Ready to come in. The part between the drill bodies, there is the land. What's this little part right here that sticks up called? Margin. Margin, all right. So the land goes from right there to right there. And so there's my land, that's what they're pointing at, and this out here is called the what? Margin. Margin, all right, provides the drill of much of its torsional strength. You can see reducing the land width increases chip space but reduces strength. That makes sense to me. What they're saying there is if I make the land smaller, what has to get bigger? No margin. No. No. Flute, flute space gets bigger. Flute space gets bigger, what does it allow you to do? Well, more chips. more chips out. <coughs> Land. All right, that brings us to the heel. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say the heel is the trailing edge. Oops. <coughs> trailing edge of the land. So if I follow it up, here's the land, and if I follow it, the trailing edge, trailing edge, the leading edge is going to be the margin, trailing edge, trailing edge, trailing edge. I come up with the point, and the back of the point I would call, the, the, sorry, the point, the, not the point, but the this, this shiny surface right here, which we'll get to in a little bit, back it out would be the heel. Make sense there? Yeah. Okay, so that's one of the things that I haven't ran across. Like, well, one of them shows it up here, one of them shows it back here. But it's kind of all the same thing. So you throw your finger along here, 
and you're going to come all the way up to right here. So it's the same thing. Uh -huh. so. The inside of the flutes, but I'm not pointing to the inside, I'm pointing to the very little edge right here. Not inside, the little edge. All right, trailing edge of the land. <coughs> not yet. All right, the heel. What number am I on? Seven. 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 Sorry, right, we're not focusing on that. Seven. Seven. <laughs> Making sure. All right. The web plays a pretty big part <coughs> in what's going on here. And you can't really see the web. <coughs> but it's inside the drill bit. And what I can say is right here on the very tip of this, and you can see the little tip right here, and that represents what I'm seeing the very <coughs> end, the very tip right now of the web. And as this drill bit gets shorter and shorter and shorter, it's actually going to get fatter and fatter in there. And for me, I can actually put my fingers right here and kind of feel the width of the web. And as I roll down, my fingers actually are moving further and further out because it, the drill bit gets fatter and fatter as you get closer to the shank, which means that the web, as shown right over here, A and B, is means that the web gets fatter and thicker as you go down in there. Now, what does it do? It contributes to the torsional strength of the drill. So when I ask you, where is the web? You're going to say, well, the web is right inside of here. And what does it do as it gets down to the shank? It gets bigger. It gets bigger. <laughs> And it provides torsional strength. Torsional strength. But what's the downside? As you as a drill bit gets shorter and shorter, what's Less what's chance. gonna what's gonna happen to the thickness of this point right here? It's gonna get, and that's the, that's a chisel right there. So it's gonna get bigger and bigger. And as that gets bigger and bigger, you have to put more and more pressure to make it work. So that is so we can describe it as one thickness measured across the flutes. Thickness measured, let's say inside, measured across the inside, inside of the flutes. Right, so web thickness. increases toward the shank and what happens when the web gets thicker more pressure All right so thick web now because the web does provide the torsional stability of the strength of the drill bit you don't want the drill bit to, to twist and unravel, right? You want the flutes to go straight, so. Uh, so you want it nice and strong. You don't want it to break off, so you want a nice size web inside there. But what happens if you make the web too big then? Thick web, thick web equals rigid drill. Good or, is that good or bad? Yeah. Okay, that's good. But more pressure, feed pressure, how much you have to push on it, more pressure is required. Sometimes a, a rigid drill isn't the best. Uh, sometimes flexible is nice. As an aircraft mechanic, uh, what are the drill bit sizes that you tend to use most now? 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. What? Okay, so 30, 30. 30. 30. 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, and 41s or 40s. And the reason why is because there's a lot of times we have to get into something 
and be and if you get a nice long drill bit like that, a small web, you can actually flex them around something and uh, almost, almost bend a corner with a drill bit like that. That's scary. They also make drill bits that have angles and stuff on them. But, <laughs> I think we had a crankcase with them too. We would just say that's not a story. Don't hurt us on that when you drilled in the crankcase of a 40. Oh. But in all fairness, they weren't like. It was actually the case. Yeah. It was in the accessories capsule. Yeah. All right, so thin web. Thin web. Thin web is a flexible drill. Flexible drill um, and less pressure. So the end of the web, the part that you can see sticking out right here, has a name, and that name is called the point. The point. <laughs> Very close. Chisel edge. The chisel edge. So that is the edge at which, at the edge at the end of the web that connects the cutting webs. I don't know about that. Uh, the edge. The end of the web. Edge at the end of the web that connects the cutting webs. That connects the cutting webs. And I think I'll say it again as the drill gets shorter, as the drill gets shorter. Chisel edge or chisel point. Oh, got a parenthesis. So I'll take either chisel edge or chisel point. Gets what? <coughs> yeah, gets wider. Gets wider. Not whiter, wider. All right, Janet, what number should we have? Nine. What Roman numeral is that? Nine. Oh, I, 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 I. No, it's not me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Helix angle. Helix angle. All right, so we talked about the uh, point there. Um, just another another slide representing kind of the same thing. So where I said that the chisel edge also connects the two cutting lips. So we have the cutting lip there and cutting lip there, and that's why we can say that it connects them because that's what it looks like. Helix angle. I'm gonna probably gonna write that in a second. Angle formed between a line drawn parallel to the axis of the drill and the edge of the land. In other words, it's the it's the angle of the flutes, really. Does that really make a difference with the angle of it? Yeah, it makes it makes a difference. Do you want to know why? What's the difference? Why why do we care, right? Yeah. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> All right, so let's see. The angle made. Let's go with this one. So write that down. Angle formed between a line drawn parallel to the axis of the drill and the edge of the land. Because I don't like what I wrote. Maybe I should change it. I wrote the angle made by the leading edge of the land with a plane containing the axis, or with a plane containing the axis of the drill. Yeah, I don't like it. So we're going to go with an angle formed between a line drawn parallel to the axis of the drill and the edge of the land. And I'm going to simplify that with um, let's see. the angle of 
rectangle of the feet and it How's that for simplicity? Line parallel to the feet. Mm -hmm. Can we go back? No. The angle of the flute. Really, I mean, that sums it up, I think, right there. Beautifully and succinctly. Right? Right. Perfect. Can I go back? <laughs> we all agree. <laughs> now go back. Tim. So the angle of the flute. Can entertain us with the song. Go ahead. <laughs> what? So the angle of the, uh, of the flute pertains to how many turns it has? Yeah, kind of, how many turns it has. So in looking at this, I would just put a pen right there and say, there's my angle. Okay. And so it's the angle between here and there. Okay. And you just put that angle, that line, wherever that. So put a pin in there. There it is. Right. So you can see on the examples here, um, a high helix angle. If I did it and my pen was kind of going like that, I'd have a high helix angle. And then I could have a medium, and then I could have one that's maybe even straight. So that would be a very slow helix angle. One right bigger than the other? Someone tell you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, a high helix angle uh, equals, let's, see, let's go back one, tab, a high helix angle. Um, ship's going to come out faster or slower? It's going to take more twists of that drill bit to get it to come out, right? So I'm going to say it's a little bit slower. So high e equals um, slower, slower chip evacuation. Um, but, or I should say and, less strength. And three would be, I actually found one book and it had an opposite. And I, I crossed it out because that doesn't make sense to me. They actually put quick chip evacuation, but less strength. But in looking at this, I got to say that it's going to take more twists to get that out. So I don't think you're going to have more chip evacuation, although there is more room for chips to build up between here and here because of all that, that angle. So is that like with like a high speed, like low speed cutting too, though? Do you use that in a high speed aspect? No, it'd be like all things being equal as far as speed goes. Um, <laughs> Which one would be which? So I, so yes, I've seen one book that has it the opposite of that. But one thing for sure, though, is that um, the high helix angle high has less strength, so it's not as strong. This one down here, the slow, is going to be the strongest. And that's what I'll hold you to. So, so a low helix angle <coughs> equals, and I'm just going to cut to the chase on this one. Um, Stronger. Anybody drill concrete? Nah, I figured. Yeah, okay. What, what, is, what does your drill bit look like when you drill concrete? The higher, the slow. I know it does. Yeah, it has a hammer end on it. So, and I know that. And sometimes I wonder. Well, I don't know if there's a lot of torsional. It's because you're using a rotor with it, so it's like yeah. Sure. So it's hammering on it. Yeah. That's the vibration of the hammer, yeah. That breaks of the asphalt. The only time I've seen the high helix angle, yeah. um, it had like an extension on the tip, almost like it was to drill a pilot hole. Um, yeah, that's what you're talking about. Those are the concrete ones. Has like a no, I saw these in like normal. Okay. They sucked. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, okay, um, so we got that one. So we'll just say high helix angle, uh, not as strong. A low helix angle is stronger, which brings me to 10 in the margin. <clears throat> the margin is the part of the land that has not been cut away. So originally I would say the drill bit was this thick, except symmetrical. It was thick all the way out to here. But then somebody said, oh, no, we got we to gotta cut that away. Eraser. We got to cut all that away. And what's going to be left is a drill bit that looks like that. Why do they want to cut that away? 
and leave this part sticking out right here. Well, if they, if they if people who made the drill bit, did not cut out all of this and left that all thick right there, then this thick part right here would actually be the same size as the hole pretty much, and the drill bit would be rubbing, all of this material would be rubbing against the inside of your hole. So all of that rubbing would create heat and friction and then, you know, things getting out of proportion and gluing and that's ugly. So now let's say, so okay, let's cut away that. Well, then why leave this? Well, for two reasons. One, you got to have the cutting lip come all the way to the edge. Several reasons, actually not two. Got to have the cutting lip come all the way out here. So that means you got to have some material out here. And by leaving <laughs> some material, uh, a certain amount of flat right there, you actually create a spot where it centers and keeps the drill going through. So it has to have something to rub, but you don't want too much to rub. So a so proportion of the land that is not cut away to provide clearance. So this provides clearance down here. Um, oh yeah, different words. Um, clearance diameter or body clearance. Body clearance prevents excessive rubbing and friction. So it's a margin. margin. This one elliptical. Of the land, which is not cut away. Bring me to do my next point, the drill point. All right, drill point has four main features, and there they are. It has the point angle, the cutting lips, chisel edge, and the lip relief. This is where things books get a little confusing here, um, but I'll try to unconfuse it right after this break.